leftist resistance cells. And uh, so I was happily heading off for India with, on a fellowship for a year to write my dissertation by translating that section, which is quite lengthy and very complicated. And um, my professor wanted me to do it, I think, because one great Japanese scholar, the late Gaijin Nagao, had, uh, who was the professor of Sanskrit in, in uh, Kyoto University in the past, and he had translated it into Japanese, which my professor was looking forward to having his help <laughs> himself. But when I got to New Jersey, my, my root teacher, the Venerable Geshe Wangyo, the Angelated Senemete, he said, oh, no, don't do that one. He said, do the Lake Dange Lake Nimbo, this one, you know, the essence of true eloquence. And um, I said, uh, oh, well, I didn't prepare for that. I didn't, you know, study it. And I haven't looked at it. And he said, well, just never mind. You just do it. I will take care of it. We'll, some people will help you. Just do that one. So then I happened to have a copy of it that His Holiness had given me when I was a monk, a little printing from Kalimpong and a uh, little green done on Western paper. And so I happened to have that, and then I took it with me on the way to India. And I began to struggle with it in Spain, waiting for my visa, which was six months delayed. <laughs> so I had six months in the horrible condition of being in Mallorca <laughs> <laughs> for these six months while waiting to go to India during the time of the Bangladesh war, et cetera, because Indira Gandhi was annoyed with America and with Kissinger and Nixon and this and that, so she was holding up American scholars' visas. And, um, and we were, so we were stuck in this paradise waiting to go and sweat. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, I was, and I was stationed by the government in Shantiniketan, near, near Calcutta, where they were beheading people, the Naxalite. It was a really bad scene there at that time. And um, so we were eagerly waiting our visa to go and get beheaded. Anyway, I began to read the book in Tibetan and try to begin to do a draft of translating it. And I just, I just couldn't, you know, I, it was really difficult. It's a very difficult book. It's known as the Dzongkapa's Iron Bow, Chakshu, in, in some circles, meaning, you know, a kind of a bow no one can bend. It's very, very difficult. And when I told His Holiness and other people that I was translating that as my dissertation project and st doing a study of it, they all like fainted and they like, what's the matter with you? You know, like, how are you presuming to do that? And I would just blame Geshe-la. I would say, well, he, <laughs> my teacher ordered me to do it. I, I don't know what to say. You know? <laughs> and, um, and, um, and so then they would kind of relent. And actually His Holiness said it was his favorite book. Of, of Tibetan philosophy, of, uh, of centrist philosophy, and that um, he um, he then helped me by going over that volume, the, the edition that I had, and showing me all the mistakes, misprints, you know, that were in it, that he from his own copy, and then he assigned me Taratoku to teach me to to read it, you know, and then I was I slowly worked on it, and then but it took me. Uh, 12 years, actually, I had to work on it before I kind of got through it. Very complicated, because his sentences are very long and his thought is very subtle. And then the story that I found out about it, which is quite marvelous, which I tell in the introduction to the book, is that when he was writing, when, when J. Dimitri was writing the thing I was originally supposed to translate for my dissertation, which subsequently has been done by the very nice Elizabeth Knapper, um, uh, he was procrastinating about it, uh, Don Kappa was. He was like, that was around 1402, I think, that he wrote uh, Lemrim. And he was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't bother with this. And then Manjushri appeared to him as often, and he was always seeing Manjushri in those days. And Manjushri said, what's your problem? What's the writer's block? What's going on, you know? And so Don Kappa said, well, you know, it's so complicated and so... Do I really, who's really ever going to read this? I mean, it's useless, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then Manjushri scolded him very strongly, saying, how are you to know how many people are smart enough to, and you know, deep enough to really cope with this? And like, you definitely should do it. What is this? You know, you don't know what, who's going to read what. And then in the future, you don't know who's going to read it. So you get busy and you write that. And then uh, and gave him a big scold. Manjushri used to scold him a lot. And, um, and then to encourage him, he somehow vouchsafed him a vision, 
where Tonkapa saw in the sky, in the place he was working on the Lamrim, which I think was Retting Monastery, Atisha's uh, disciples founded monastery, Dom Dombas Monastery. Um, he saw from where he was, his, his writing stu stu study, he saw in the sky the 20 emptinesses written in golden letters. Silver, I'm sorry, silver letters, silver letters. So silver Sanskrit letters, the 20 emptinesses. But in Sanskrit, not Tibetan. So that was kind of cheery. He would get up in the morning, look out the sky, and see these silver letters out there of <laughs> emptiness of everything, you know. So then he went ahead and he wrote that. And then it said in 1407, when he came back, he wrote this when he was writing his commentary on the Nagarjuna's great book called Wisdom, the, which people wrongly call the, the root verses, the Madhyamaka Karikas, the root verses on the Madhyamaka, which is just the subtitle. The title of the book is The Wisdom. Wisdom, it even says, you know, Pradnya Nama Mula Madhyamaka Karika. The Mula Madhyamaka Karika is a subtitle, you know, like a descriptive title. And the main, it's just wisdom is what it's called that book. And when he was doing that, the complexities in the first chapter where Nagarjuna is rejecting causation, which is a huge thing to do, showing the unworkability of ordinary causation, analyzing causation until it dissolves under analysis, you could say. Since as you know, since you're all Buddhist scholars, Buddha's great discovery was causation, and, the, but, and also the cessation of causes. You know, Om Ye Dharma Hetu Prabhava Hetun Tisham Tathagata Hi Avadat Tisham Chayo Nirodho and their cessation, you know. 